We previously distinguished between qualitative variables and quantitative variables, saying that qualitative variables did not represent numbers and were typically measured on nominal or ordinal scales. Even if the variables are categorized with numerical values, those numerical values may not make any sense from the perspective of arithmetic operations. That is, for the ordinal variable mm -hmm. finish of the Oklahoma City Memorial Marathon, we can't add a first place finish to a third place finish and end up with a fourth place finish. Here, the ordinal numbers don't have a numerical meaning. Say we've collected a sample of electric power outage data maintained by the U.S. Energy Information Administration. We have a sample of size 28 with variables area affected, type of disturbance, and number of customers affected by the outage. The area affected and type of disturbances are qualitative variables, while the number of customers is a continuous quantitative variable. We don't have a lot of options for depicting qualitative data, but we'll use the type of disturbance variable for the ones that we do. The first means to display qualitative data is with a frequency distribution, which lists all the categories and the number of observations that belong to each of the categories. A frequency distribution essentially shows what its name implies. It quantifies the frequency with which each category occurs in our sample. We can provide a tally view of the frequency of each category, or we can just provide the final frequency. Sometimes raw numbers, in this case the raw number of occurrences of each category, aren't as illustrative as the relative frequency of each category. The relative frequency transforms the frequency into a proportion of the whole, or the occurrence of a particular category relative to all other categories. We find the relative frequency by dividing by the sum of observations. For example, the relative frequency of earthquakes in 28 observations was 2 out of 28, or 0 0.071. Many folks find it easier to think in terms of a percentage, so multiplying the relative frequency by 100 provides that percentage. In this case, 7.1%. Viewing frequencies or relative frequencies in tabular form may not be terribly helpful in interpreting a data set. There are a couple of different graphical depictions that might be more effective. Bar graphs and pie charts translate these frequencies or relative frequencies into a graphical representation of how categories stack up with each other. A bar graph visualizes the frequency or relative frequency on the vertical axis for categories along the horizontal axis. Note that there is space in between the bars, suggesting that the horizontal axis is not continuous. This picture provides a good indication of the more frequent and less frequent categories making up a data set. A pie chart provides the relative frequency of each category as a part of a whole. With our electric power data, the 28 observations are considered the whole, and the categories are assumed to be the universe of categories that could have been witnessed in our data. In a sense, we aren't leaving ourselves any categories that could have occurred had we chosen a larger sample, and therefore uncovered a category less likely to have occurred in a sample of 28. This is one drawback of a pie chart. However, they're frequently used, so we should at least introduce them, especially since the options for depicting qualitative data are sparse. In conclusion, for qualitative data, we generally describe the occurrence of different categories within a set of data using frequencies or relative frequencies and we have a couple of basic options for turning these numerical descriptors into graphical depictions with bar graphs and pie charts.